This is an SM Media production. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of All Time 11 right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McTighe, delighted to be your host. I'm joined this week by the former Liverpool and Inverness defender, David Raven. David, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks very much for coming on. No, you're welcome, yeah. Thanks for having me on. No problem. How you no been? You all right? All. How you doing? Been really well, yeah. Keeping busy. Um, enjoying playing football, John. Been lucky to play during the lockdown, so yeah. Um, still working as well, so nothing much has changed as far as that's concerned. So, uh, yeah, happy, happy. Brilliant. You'd, uh, you'd an interesting start to your career coming through the ranks of Liverpool. Just talk us through those days, like but the memories are there, memories of coming through. Uh, memories are like, uh, I don't know, you know, going to Melbourne, mixing with them boys at Melbourne, um, the likes of the Gerrards and Carragher's, the Diamonds of this world, and um. I'm pinching myself that I'm actually there mixing with them and learning off them, training with them and had a few games. Um, you know, in a nutshell, wasn't up to that standard at that point in my career, although in front of me wasn't much. Um, I, you know, there was chances there. There were chances there, sorry. And, um, yeah, I just didn't quite take that chance for whatever reason. I've often looked back at my career and wondered why. But, um, again, that's another long sort of story I could go into but um they were they were brilliant days. Um as I, you know I got to the point where I needed to make a decision where I needed to go and play football. So I can either stay at Liverpool playing the reserves, which is I was in and out of the first team and when I went back to the reserves it was like right, I've had this taste of the first team and I and I know that I need to move on and um I decided to to cut my ties and move on with I had a year left on my contract, but I just knew that I needed to move and, and go and play proper football, if, if you like. Brilliant. You can have played for a few clubs in England, but you remembered mostly in Scotland for your time at Inverness. Just how, how good was your time up, the, up in the Highlands? It was the best of my life. It was the best was time. Yeah, the best. Yeah, um, without a shadow of a doubt. Just everything was, was right up there. We ended up having two children up there. It was brilliant. Yeah. The club was great. It was on the up. There's some, we played with some great players in, in the team. We were successful. Um, it's a beautiful place to live. Um, everything was just was, was great at that time in my life in terms of uh, career, personal life. Everything was, you know, clicked. Um, don't get me wrong, it was a tough move at first. I took a bit of time settling in, but once I'd settled and I'd worked hard to sort of find my feet, um, it was great. I was in a peak of my career as well. That helped. So yeah. strong and confident, you know. Um, that sort of golden four years between 28 and 32 if you like so I spent up in Inverness um, and I, it was brilliant so I can't, I've got nothing but happy memories from up there but I mean, the cop the cop one will be high in your list of good memories just kind of how sad was it that you, you missed the game through injury but what was the kind of memories of that day just... uh, it, it was sad it was sad um, but I felt like because of the, the way the semi-final went if it didn't go like that yeah. Then it would have been it would have been a lot different for me mentally. But I was able to cope with it because of that because I I had such that big moments in the semi final. I thought, yeah, I'll never I'll never better that if in the final anyway. Yeah. I was gutted to miss it. I ruptured me. Uh, I, I torn my calf. I was nowhere near fit ready for it. Um, and you know what? Things happen for a reason. And James Vincent come on come on the pitch and he came out right back that day and because Carl was sent off and. He, he was up the top of the pitch because he was fit enough to be there. And I think, would I have been there? Uh, probably not at that point in the game. So I don't, you know, these things happen for a reason. And we won the cup and that's all I was concerned about. And um, the memories after that, like pretty hazy, good party, good bus, but journey back, you know, um, two days on the drink. It was brilliant. pretty heavy stuff. It was brilliant, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Great memories. But uh, we'll start off with our... What's your, what's your team going to be? Is it going to be players you played with or players you played against? Players I played against. Okay. And yeah. what's your formation going to be? Uh, changed loads of times, but I uh, come to it just to get players in 4 4 2. Yeah, 4 4 2. Brilliant. We'll make a wee start. Just, talk, just tell us who's going to be the goalkeeper for the team. Uh, it's difficult with goalkeepers. 
I was trying to think of top goalkeepers I played against. I never really take much notice of goalkeepers when I play against them. Really, like, uh, plus if they like they've got a great kick on and they're booming on top of my head every every time they're kicking it. Uh, and I was thinking back, and only one really of note I can think of apart from Craig Gordon, obviously being top draw at Celtic, but he never he never put him to the test enough. So that's why he yeah. didn't get me team. Although he's been top draw, the only other one was. Paul Robinson, so maybe debut at Tottenham. Paul Robinson was was in goal that day, uh, and I can't look past the fact that he's he's absolutely top draw, so he gets he goes in goal. Mm-hmm. What was good about him? Just his was he a good choice stopper. It's just his career. It's just a career that he's had, isn't it? And I think, yeah. well, yeah, he, he, he's just Premier League, wasn't he? This whole career, and I think internationally, you can't argue with that. He's um, as I say, like, it could have been. I looked at. I can't think of any any other keepers who really come near it that I've played against. So, um, yeah, he's he, he's the man. Yeah, brilliant. We'll move on to right back. This is a position I imagine you've thought long and hard about. This was really hard. This was the hardest position to pick up. Okay. There was a few lads. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had. I was thinking in a reserve game I played against Gary Neville. And I was going to put him in, but these are just purely first team games uh, that I've chose. So. Gary Neville would have been in there because he was. We played against United Resies, um for Liverpool, yeah. and he was he was he, oh, he was a machine. He was storming up and down the wing, and I was thinking, wow, that's why you're an international player. He was brilliant that day. Um, but what who I've gone for um, was a guy who played for Swansea. He went all up to the Premier League with them and stayed in the Premier League for the rest of his career, and his name was Angel Rangel. Right. Okay. Um, and he was he was very very impressive. Didn't give it away. He was athletic, good defender. I was thinking of Adam Matthews, maybe put him in there with Celtic for his Celtic days because he was strong and fast and very very good going forward. Um, but again, yeah. So that, he, he he's going back to two thousand and seven there when I played against him, and yeah. he carried on with Swansea to the Championship and then into the Premier League, and had probably had about I don't know seven eight years in the Premier League at the end of his career. Um, and he, he was impressive, so that's why I put him in. Brilliant. We'll move on to left back. Who's that now? Um, it, again, I put Kieran Tierney in. Right, um, okay. Because it just speaks for itself, doesn't it, how good he is. I could have put on, um, Andy Robertson in, but it, we, when we played Dundee United, he wasn't quite in his pomp. Yeah. Yes, he's gone, he's gone on to do great things since, but he was still a young lad coming through. Um, so that's why I've got Tini because I'm playing. I played against him when he's you know torn down the left hand side and and and, um, and been non-stoppable because he's powerful. He's he, you know he's got quality. Oh, yeah, he's he's got the lot. So that's why I put him in instead of Andy Robertson. Did he give you a tough time when you come up against him? Tini yeah. couldn't get near him. Couldn't really? get near him. Yeah, you're trying. You couldn't get near him. Like he was, especially under Brendan Rodgers. Um, the positions he was taking up were really tough to to play against, but when you got in that one on one situation and he just knocked it out of his feet down to that byline, you, I, I couldn't I couldn't get near him. I was I was thirty one, thirty two at that point, um, and he was well, however old he was, but he was he was so strong and powerful, uh, big fat like fat thighs on him. Do you know what I mean? I'm just full of power. So yeah, he he was top draw. Brilliant. We'll move on to left centre back. Uh, Ledley King, he played at Tottenham when I played down there. And again, amazing career he's had. Strong, quick, good on the ball. I just remember thinking I was quite uh, a little bit starstruck by him. I must admit when when he was on the same pitch as me. So that was um, I don't know, yeah sweeping the ball left to right and all that. I was thinking, God, that's Ledley King over there, you know. <laughs> I was just a young a young lad. And it always it always stuck in my mind. Um he stuck in my mind playing against him that night. Not that he did particularly anything spectacular, but for some reason he stuck in my mind um just because I was a young boy. He was someone I looked up to at the time. Uh so if I put him in for that. He was very unlucky unlucky with injuries as well, wasn't he? Like yeah, he had bad knees, so he only trained a couple of times and played at the weekend. And so, had he not had them, I reckon he would have been, you know, he's he's up there with yeah, Rio Fernandes in this world, isn't he? So, definitely. Yeah. Well, we'll close out the defence by asking who's the right-sided centre back. Big Virgil Van Dijk. 
We can't right, get. Okay. Yeah, he's the best defender in the world. So and that, I think he just explains himself, doesn't he? He was like, um, uh, I, I liken him to um, Jonah Lomu. Remember the the yeah, rugby yeah, player yeah. from? I used to think he was like him. He used to about three of us to try and get him down. Like <laughs> get the ball out of his feet, stride through the middle of the pitch, and I'm thinking, this guy's like a man. man. How are we going to stop him? <laughs> And it, it reminded me of, uh, of it, yeah, John Malone. <laughs> so, yeah, unbelievable player. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, reaching his potential, isn't he? Yeah. Did you Which think that when you played against him at Celtic that he would go on to be the, the man he was? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was amazed he was at Celtic. Amazed that. And I was amazed more so that he went to Southampton. With no due, with all due respect to Southampton, why yeah. Arsenal, Liverpool, Man U didn't come and get him, I will never know. Mm. I mean, you hear, um, I think with Neil Lennon saying something, and when when they had all of him, like he he knew, he just like I need to get the best out of him while we've gone because he's going. It's as simple as that. He's that mm. good. Um, ah, he's getting out of his feet and zinging it all over the park, thinking it was it was this guy. <laughs> oh, so he was, he was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, he was a brilliant player. Uh, right midfielder. We'll start off in midfield. Who is it? Who's the right midfield? Oh, this is tough again. I couldn't think of many, but oh, the amount of like strikers I was coming up with and forward players, you know, um, I was coming up with the likes of, like, well, I'll tell you who's in the team first. It's John Walters. He's a local lad. You know, we played against yeah. John, and uh, when I was a kid, and we played against Stoke in the in the League Cup at Stoke, and. Um, Again, he was he was in his pomp then. So we've been at been at um, Ipswich and then we're playing at uh, Stoke City, and I was so impressed with him. Big, strong, the ball stuck, bringing people into play. He was aggressive. I was thinking, wow, he's, this guy's the real deal. And he had about five years in the Premier. He was like very, very good. I put him on the right because I had to just want. I wanted him in the team because um, so he was so impressive. And obviously, he's a, he's a local lad to me as well. So. Um, just for that reason, really, just one of them players again. It stuck out in my mind on that particular day, that particular game. Wow, you're the real deal. That's what it takes to get to your level. Do you know what I mean? And um, fair play to him. He's been, he's had a great career. Yeah, um, definitely has. Yeah, so I'll put him in. Brilliant. We'll move on to the left midfield. Um, again, only one game I played against him, but he stuck out like a sore thumb um, and went on. So I've an unbelievable career and still is having one. It's Adam Adam Lalana. Yeah. He, the man was he was he was left back at the time at Southampton, but he was just unstoppable. He was a bit like Teeny and um Andy Robertson. So he goes in left wing and again he was just he was untouchable when he was on, on his day. And I wasn't ever surprised whatsoever when he was when he kicked on up the leagues. I could have put people like Joe Murphy in. Um, at Motherwell and then went on to Rangers because he used to tell me I knew I knew Bumolas and it is just, all the time I played against him he used to tell me inside out I was thinking so it was between Lallana and uh, and Murphy um, Lallana wins it just because the quality that he had but like um, certain players just when you play against them just have the measure of you and he, he had the measure of me left wing all the time there was a guy down at Huddersfield um Guy Jones was it? He used to just tear me inside out every single time we played against him. So, like, oh, so it's funny that um, you play against these players. You never really kick on to the Premier League, but I've got the measure of you. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. uh, but I put, I put him the Lana. Yeah, brilliant. We'll move on to the centre of the midfield. We'll start off with the left left sided centre midfield. Who's in there? Uh, Victor Wanyama, Celtic. Yep. Another man mountain, another like Joan alone. We sort of character where you think, Are you going to get him down? He's so strong, can't get the ball off him. Was never surprised when he went down to Tottenham. I'm surprised he hasn't kicked on as I thought he might. Yeah, me too. Um, he, had his, he had his chances, hasn't he? And oh, well, he went down to Southampton first. Sorry, but um, I'm just surprised he hasn't reached that next level again and been like the main man for them. Um, just because I think he is that good. He's had he's had a few injuries, hasn't he? But um, yeah, what a player, what a mm. player. Especially at Celtic, he was just dominating every single game. Yeah, he definitely yeah. was. We'll move. We'll finish off the midfield by looking at the the right centre midfielder who's in there. Uh, Michael Carrick again played on in that Tottenham team. So, oh, yeah, graceful, good on the ball, 
I love what what a player, international player, and it's like just a an honour to say you've been on the same pitch as someone like that in a competitive game. So that's why I put him in. Um, again, there's been players through the careers where I mean the likes of like Richie Wellens, at, who's managing Salford now, who was at Doncaster yeah. when I was playing against him. Like people like him and Brian Stock and all these guys that people don't really know about. Um, but for me, when you're playing against them. The top draw, and you can't get the ball off them. They just might not have had that physicality that other players might have had. Yeah. So that you know they're not as big and strong as Juan Yarman and, and Carrick, but they're just as good as footballers. Um, do you know? So I mean, Fabian Delph was an, was one I was going to put in, um, but again, I didn't play against him in his in his peak. So that's why it didn't. Work. He was great. He was brilliant. He was at Leeds, um, and we all knew he was going to kick on, but he wasn't quite in his peak then. So that's why I thought I put Carrick in because. Of, I can put my hand up and say, yeah, I've played against him. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Probably saw a very, very good team so far, probably. I think that well, not many not many goals have been conceded in that team. I know, yeah. It's, it's, I, I was looking at it before and I thought to myself, wow, yeah, that is an amazing, amazing team to think that I've been on the same competitive pitch as these guys. And you said earlier about getting starstruck. Like, do you see when you're during the game, like when you see a, a player that's just blown you away? Like, do you just sit and do you just stand and think, like, how how am I, am I lucky to be in the same park or something like that? Like, is that, is uh, that in your mind? Not, no, not now. Not, not when I got past the phase to sort of after me leave Liverpool debut and, and leaving Liverpool because um, I was training with the likes of, of Gerard and that. So, I got past that pretty quickly then. So when we would play, I mean, you know, you, you play things, people like, uh, say, Newcastle in, in friendlies when you're playing against Nicky Butt, um, yeah. you know, people like Joey Barton, or, or all these guys, you know, me and Steven Taylor. And you're not starstruck then because it's fine. They're just, they're just normal lads. And um, I mean, it's a quick story about uh, Joey Barton. How, like, he, got, he gets a lot of stick. Um, and ever since... The day we played Newcastle in the behind closed doors friendly, and uh, he came over to me, Joey, after the game. I I didn't know he knew me. Uh, he obviously he's done his own work. He looked into who we were playing. I was from the local area. Came yeah. straight over after the game. Hi Dave, how you doing? Chatting away. He knew me. Knew my name. I was at Carlisle at the time. And from that day on, I'm like, this guy's a good guy. This guy is. A, he's getting a lot sticking. He's getting a lot of stick in the press, but yeah. he's a good guy. Do you know what I mean? And um, so you play these. When you do play against them, eventually, yeah, it is it is a pleasure to be on the same pitch and say that about them. But you don't get starstruck in the same way, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. We'll close up with the the strikers now. This must oh, be a very very tough, tough choice. And yeah, we'll tough, start yeah. off. We'll start off with a left sided striker who's. who's oh man, there. it could have been it. Well, yeah. Do I need to? Don't need to tell you who's on the bench yet or not? Or is that after? Because yeah, it's, it's between. It's between. It, it was between a few of them, so I've put um, Musa Dembele in Celtic. Okay, that could have that could have been a host of others, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I've put, in, put him in, obviously for the Scottish viewers and like how good he actually is um, when he's on his on his day. But like John Walters was going to be up there, or Grant Holtz, uh, Jermaine yeah. Defoe, Peter Crouch, loads of these guys, top draw players. But yeah. He gets there for me because uh, again, on his day, he was just untouchable. Like we couldn't get near him, you know. Mm. Just his pace was, was his pace just like enough. Best pace, anyway. power, touch, skill. Yeah, couldn't get near him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And we'll close up with the right sided striker. Who's in there? Uh, Robbie Keane. Okay. Robbie Keane was so impressive. Uh, I still, I still coach the lads now that I coach. After playing, so Robbie Keane. After playing against him, uh, Robbie Keane won't just... You, you talk about a double movement in football, so you take a, take a defender away to come short to get the ball or come short, take a defender in to go long, right? It's, it's sort of basic movements. Robbie Keane used to do three, four, five different movements before he even got the ball. Really? And before he'd even... And then when he got the ball, you, your head was spinning. <laughs> do you know what I mean? He'd go forward, he'd go front post, he'd, he'd check back, he'd go there, he'd go there again, and you're thinking, oh my God, how do you keep tabs on this guy? So he gets it for me, and what a career he's had, and what a player he was, what a player. So yeah, he, again, he's just another, he just stuck out in my mind, and I, it's always stuck in my mind how like his movement was just second to none, trying to pick that up. 
Um, so yeah, he gets he gets in the team there as well. I mean, a team's different class. Like this, it's, it's, it's a strong team, team isn't it? it? <laughs> it's more than many teams as strong as that. But who you can I touch on it a wee minute ago? Just who who matches the cut that you've you you were really really close to putting in? Or who would be um, the one to stick well, out to you? I was gonna. With the reserve teams and all that and the friendlies, there's been a few few big names, but I thought I can't put them in because they're not they're not competitive. I mean, Paul Merson was one that stood out. I played against him in the in the reserves and oh my god, what a play this man is. You know, it, it doesn't I mean to see him it I don't know, I've shown me aids now, aren't I? Because he's sitting on the Sky Sports punditry panel. <laughs> um he he ran the show for Aston Villa Reserves against us, and I'm thinking, wow. Um so yeah, as I said, the likes of John Walters, Grant Holt, Jermaine Defoe, Peter Crouch, Fabian Delph, these are guys I've, I've, I've just written down and, you know, it talks about the, the Richie Wellens and stocks of this world and, uh, uh, you know, it's a real tough call to, there's so many good players out there that you play it's against. It's hard to just um, make an 11, isn't it? It's hard to. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, you could, your 11 could be you know, half Celtic, half Rangers at times, really, that, you know, and some of the boys that he played against, Joe Garner, I played with him, against him, and um, top draw. Uh, so, yeah, it was it was a tough task. <laughs> it was that. See, just as well, when you were at Inverness, like, obviously, I'm just going to change the subject to you back here, but see, when you were at Inverness, and, like, who were the, some of the good players that you played with at that point? Like, Oh, well, Ryan Christie, obviously going on to Scotland is the main one who comes into your head. When he's coming through the youth, um, we knew he was special at the time. Uh, he was obviously he's not physically as uh, strong as he, as he is now, yeah. but we just knew this this guy's got it. Like he's he's got it. He's going places. We used to, we we'd be telling that you know what I mean. We wouldn't big him up, and he didn't need he didn't need to be told. He just knew. Um, he was just finding spaces that and doing things that we we couldn't do, and he was doing it every single day in training, and we were just yeah. This is different class. Um, and then you've got Graeme Shinney, Andrew Shinney, gone and yeah. playing the championship down in England, playing for Scotland. They were, they were just really you know, top draw players. Um, Marley Watkins going in the championship and then Greg Tanzi. Yeah. Um, they were, you know, <clears throat> Greg didn't fulfil his potential with his injuries. Uh, it's a real shame. Yeah, he was unlucky, yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, and then you, the likes of Gaz, Gaz Warren in, in, in his heyday, you know, he, you don't get much much better defender than that. He, he could have gone down, and who knows what what level he could have played at. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they're, they're standout performers, really. Mm-hmm. So that's it's a, it was a very very good team, and it was an absolute pleasure. Thanks very oh, much for coming on, David. I really really appreciate it. It was brilliant. Ah, you're welcome. Thanks, Thanks a lot. very much, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Mate. Cheers. Cheers.